it's, it's ironic that you bring up AB32, Kathy, because three of your member companies are now funding the campaign to delay AB32. Three of your member companies are also resisting a bill that would introduce severance taxes in the state of California. State of California is the only, the only state in the country that doesn't have a severance tax on oil companies. Explain what that is. Um, it, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a tax on the oil companies that could go towards funding our schools, towards funding our parks. There's a, a new bill that's being introduced called AB 656, which would institute a modest 12.5%, half the rate that Alaska taxes its oil companies, a modest fee that would fund public education. If Sarah Palin can do it, <laughs> so can California. <laughs> Michael. Uh, uh, on the oil severance tax, I think what's important to understand is in California, we have other taxes that other states do not have. And when you compare taxes on the industry here in California to the rest of the oil producing states, California right now is right in the middle. So there's just as many states below and just as many states above us from a tax standpoint. What this particular tax does is it puts California number one in the nation as the most heavily taxed oil producing state in the nation. And on AB 32? The, uh, what, what Michael is referring to is the current initiative, and we as an association do not take positions on initiatives. Um, it is correct, some of our members are involved, but it should also be known that the reason is because this is a pretty costly exercise. And I would say that there's not anyone in this room who wouldn't care at this point in time, in this climate, at 12 and a half, again, percent unemployment rate, this initiative says you wait till it gets back to 5.5%, which is what it was before it was passed. Now you can argue about the numbers, you can argue about the concept, but I think the cost of the program are significant. I am not saying it is not meritorious to pursue it. Um, as I said, we're very involved in trying to reduce the carbon intensity of our fuels as, as required by law starting this year. One of the tools we use to make the kinds of evaluations that have been talked about here, particularly Michael, is is AB 32. So you, hmm. it, it has forced government and industry to look at cradle to grave for the first time ever. It's forced all government agencies to come together and compare all the various aspects. It's the greatest systems analysis tool we've ever had. And you will slowly get all the answers to what are the best routes to take and not take. And so that's why I think it's silly to, to do away with something that is a tool. You, you can debate the climate change issue, but it's sure forcing the kinds of analyses we've always needed. Next Kathy, question. Kathy, hold on just quickly. If, if you agree with Jim that AB 32 is an effective tool, will you work with the Sierra Club to convince your members to stop fighting it? That would be an, uh, a very, that would take all of my time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm willing to volunteer. A worthwhile use, maybe. <laughs>